Hi everyone. Well, in our last two sections in chapter five, we're gonna look at some other rules, <coughs> excuse me, for integrating. Um, so one of the functions that we haven't really seen yet, like on the, um, or dealt with a lot is the natural log function or logarithms in general. So we've seen the basic one, uh, the integral of one over x dx, and that's ln of the absolute value of x plus c. But in general, if you look at your fraction, if the derivative of the denominator is on top, then that will integrate into the ln of the absolute value of u, or the denominator, plus c. Because that's how you take a derivative anyway. You take what's inside the ln, throw it in the denominator, and then put its derivative on top. So you're just reversing that process. Okay, so let's find the indefinite integral for these. So you have a fraction, so is the derivative of the denominator sitting on top? So the derivative of x plus 8 is 1, so the answer is yes, it is. So you just get to straight integrate it using this. So ln of the absolute value of x plus 8 plus c. Part b, the derivative of 3x minus 5, that is 3. So it follows the format we want. So it's ln of the absolute value of that denominator plus c. All right, so let's look at example c. The derivative of that denominator would be 4x plus 4, which I don't have on the top. I have x plus 1. But if I multiplied the top by a 4, that would make it my 4x plus 4. Uh, but I can't just multiply by a 4 on the inside. I have to do something else. i got to multiply by a 1 fourth on the outside. So the 1 fourth I put on the outside stays. And now I have the correct format. I have u prime over u. So it's going to be ln of the absolute value of that denominator. Okay. Moving on to part D. So if I did the derivative of this denominator, that would not be one. So that's not even close, but I can rewrite it. Because what is the derivative of ln of x? Well, that's 1 over x. So if I kind of rewrite this a little bit, I can unsimplify it and change it into 1 over x ln of x. And now I have u prime over u. So it's ln of the absolute value of whatever that denominator is. And that denominator is another ln of x. So ln of the absolute value of ln of x. All right, part E, it's really similar to part D, but it's a little bit different. Now there's an, a power being involved on that ln of x. If I try to rewrite it the same way I did here, the derivative is no longer going to be the numerator. So what we're going to do instead is go back to like 5.5, and we're going to use a u substitution to a u sub. <clears throat> so u, I'm going to let that equal ln of x, because that's the stuff inside the parentheses. And then the du is 1 over x dx. So if I switch everything around, I end up with 1 over u to the third du. So I'm really integrating u to the negative third, which is negative one half u to the minus two. 
And then I'm going to flip this down to the denominator, and then I'm also going to change it back in terms of x. So minus 1 over 2 ln of x squared plus c. <clears throat> so some of these will involve a u substitution, uh, and it's not going to, because it's not fitting the u prime over the u. So they're not all going to come out just like these. Uh, again, you got to know when to use these rules and when not to. All right, so example f. We don't have a rule for tangent yet. And that's because we need to rewrite tangent as sine over cosine and look at it, look at it in this format. Because now we got this technique to integrate. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So I need a negative inside and out. So I have negative ln absolute value cosine of x plus c. All right, so that will cover the first part of this section. Uh, so stay tuned for the next video.